If you worked with Xcode on your Mac for some time, you will realize it's how much space it's taking up on your disk. This is especially true if you only have 250 gigabyte, which I also had in the beginning. I had to clean it once a month. The problem is it's not just one folder or a few folder, it's all over the place and knowing what to delete is quite a challenge and particularly important. You don't want to delete something that causes problems with Xcode and you won't be able to build your projects. So I'm going to show you how to clean your Mac from Xcode in a safe way. Now let's first have a look at how much space you actually have. You can go to the settings app under general and then select storage. It will give you one section for developer, which if you press on this icon, gives you a couple of suggestions. In my case, it already tells me that I have 61 gigabyte. Now, what can you delete? The caches is safe to delete, the build indexes and some of the archives if you don't need them anymore. It also suggests me here device support, but so far this is only giving me 60 gigabyte, which is really not everything, <laughs> especially if you look at the overview. So the orange is the developer, but I also have here this mysterious, which always annoyed me. This mysterious system data is like the, we don't know what it is. We don't care. If you scroll down, there's also no more information here. And part of these 130 gigabytes is more of Xcode files. I made a small utility app that you can download where I collected a lot more of these files. So this is the same files as you just saw. But you see it's 84 gigabyte. Then I have here IO simulators, nine gigabyte, and there is Xcode simulator runtimes, which at one of these is already like five to eight gigabyte. And I have 10 of them. I already deleted quite a lot of them. So as you see, I have more than 100 gigabyte taken up by Xcode. With this little app, you can directly see what it is. It also added the possibility here to delete things. Let's now go through each of them to know what it actually is. I will keep here my system settings because this is a better track of what is going on. This will automatically update and the app that I built will not update here. This is analyzer. So we just have a look at these files now. Starting off with archives. This is if you build a project to publish it in the app store or self-publish. You create a archive for each of these publishing versions. If you tap here, you will go into the archives folder. Under library developer Xcode archives. You should not just delete everything because you need some of the archives for later. That's why I didn't add this delete button. It also doesn't take up too much space. Then we have derived data. This is under library developer Xcode DRF data. This is also recommended to delete. So you can just have a look what is in this folder. These are files related when you press on build in your in Xcode. It starts this little message of indexing. So there's indexing files in here or something related to if you use a Swift package and it needs to download this from GitHub, for example, this information will be stored in this folders. The main recommendation is just to delete everything in this folder because it's quite big. But if you restart Xcode with this project, you will get a lot of errors for packages or indexing. You need to press the caches refresh. So that's why I don't like to delete everything. Just delete the ones that you didn't use for some time. So you don't have problems later with Xcode. Then the next one is device support. This is also what Apple recommended under the developer section. This is device support for different versions that I installed. I only have three, but I probably can delete one of them. You should not just delete because you're still running <laughs> some of these projects. That's why I also added this here. Go and select the ones that you don't need anymore, like the 18.1 or 18.1.1. The main point is you're not going to delete everything because some of this data you actually need. We have caches. This is quite big. It's under library developer core simulator caches. If you want to see this, I also wrote a blog post with this, which you can find in the description. So you don't need to type this. You can just use the links that I provided also with terminal commands. So this one we should definitely delete because 48 gigabyte is quite a lot. And it's the one that you see here also Xcode caches. 
Then we have Xcloud Playground project caches. This is similar to when you build and run a project with an iOS simulator. The playground also adds some additional caching files, so it builds faster in the future. I don't use playgrounds that much, but apparently I still have 18 gigabyte, which I definitely want to remove. Then we have the Xcode previews. This changed with Xcode 16 now. At some point a year ago, I had like 200 gigabytes in this folder. Now it's together, so they don't need to accumulate so much data anymore, but I still have 10 gigabyte. You definitely should not touch this folder directly. The way to do this is with a um, terminal command. And in this case, it needs to be xc run sim l set previews delete all. If you use the app, you can just press this uh, button here, which runs this terminal command and then deletes this. In case this doesn't work and Xcode is not set up properly, you can run sudo Xcode select reset. This is then just resetting it. I need to use your sudo for higher permissions. So I need to actually enter my password again. That's why I can't run this in the app. And then you can try again to run these cleanup commands. Next, I want to talk about simulators and runtimes. Every time you open Xcode, maybe I'll do this so it's a bit easier to understand. Okay, I'm now on Xcode. I created a new project and the minimum deployment is 18.2. And this means I need to have the iOS version 18.2 installed. So the operating system, they call it runtime. So I have the runtimes, the iOS 18.2. Point two, but I also have different simulators. For example, if I here choose a iPhone 16, 16 plus plus pro. So this is then combining the simulator with the different iOS versions. And if we go here under the minimum deployment target, you see, I can go down until 15. Let's say the normally you would go to 16. And I open here again to this right. You see, I have a lot more because I don't keep this actually clean. I have a lot of different simulators and some of them are the iPhone 16 for the newest, which is 18.2 and 18.1. So these are all the simulators. When I select one, build and run, this is then creating additional files. The first time it takes longer because it creates this. Building this took a lot longer than normally because I removed so many files that are not there to optimize this process. For example, the derived data, which I can just delete, is now 3 gigabyte because it needed to regenerate some of these files. Additionally, the main point of this exercise was, you see, I have here the same iOS simulators, but sorted by the runtime by iOS. For example, I now have these for iOS 18. This simulator now has an additional gigabyte generated. If you don't use them, it's just like a reference. The reason why these files are there is it needs to properly set up the simulator. For example, if you if your app works with the file system and wants to store files here, or you're working with images and to manipulate them, you would drag and drop images into your simulator. These all needs to be stored together with the simulator. And you're generating quite a bit of data. Besides, you need to always have some simulators for testing. Sometimes you want to add your default data to have something to test for. So it's a good idea to keep track of which one you want to actually use. Maybe you don't even work with the iPad. And so you can delete them in here. Probably should add some loading indicators. It's a good idea to keep just a couple of simulators with your data. For example, you have one smaller iOS 16 and then 16 Pro Max. So I would delete all the others or you want to still support the SE. You don't need all these iPads. When you do this here in the app, to get an overview of where your data is, just find this more convenient because then I know which simulators I did use. Whereas in this list, it's getting a little bit more difficult. You can also press your manage run destinations under simulators. So you see this list and when you select and then right click, you can also delete them here. Now, this is one part of the equation of having the simulators, but I also talked about this run times. So the iOS 18.2, maybe you want to get rid of one of them. 
And you can, for example, here press plus and then say under here, download more simulator runtimes because now it only allows me to use these three. This is going to the component section in the settings window. You can also go under Xcode settings, and then here in the components tab. Now this is a lot of data. <laughs> As you see, it is like, I don't know, 60, 70, and I already deleted like half of them. This is the same as I show in the app down here. And one thing to note is that some of them are not supported anymore. I show this error that 15 is not supported. One way of getting rid of them is by, you can here delete them. Like maybe I don't need to have 17.5 and 17.4 and just delete them in Xcode directly. Or one way of properly deleting the one that are not supported is with a terminal command. And this is XC run simulators delete unavailable. This is the same as when you press here, this button. I definitely here should remove iOS 15. Then you see I have here two times eight, three times 18. This is because some of these are better versions, which you see better from Xcode components. So I have here the newest iOS, iOS 18.2, which is taking up 8.7 gigabyte. But I also have here iOS 18 beta 1, beta 2 and beta 7, and each of them takes up 8 gigabyte, which is very pointless. So we are going to get rid of them. So you can do this directly in Xcode. Delete. Delete. You can always download these ones later again. So now I have one for 18 and one for 7.5, which I did not count this, but this was probably like 30 uh, gigabyte. You can also remove watchOS if you don't need this. This is, as you see, if you scroll up again, it always says that you can get it back if you want to. But why store four gigabyte if you don't have to? The problem now is I did remove this one times, but it didn't delete the simulators. So I'm just going to remove the one that I wanted, which you either do this here by manage runtimes or in the app that I made. So I did keep 18.1, 18.2. You see here that this one simulator that I was just running iPhone 16 already has one gigabyte. There are some inconsistencies because I thought I deleted more, but it didn't. So we're going to delete 18.1 because it's the older one. So first I remove the simulators. It's just three of them that take up most of the space. Okay, I removed now two, two runtimes and two, which are the latest for 17 and the latest for 18 and a lot of simulators. Where I know that the one I'm most probably going to use is iPhone 16, which accumulated more data. When you do this delete, it will temporarily just remove everything, but Xcode needs these files. For example, the um, simulator caches to optimize running them. So it runs them faster in the simulator. That's why I now again have 11 gigabyte after running this, which took some time. So just be aware that you won't be able to completely erase this. I'm now back to 29, but this was still better than 80. There's a reason why these files are there. For me, the biggest savings was the drive data and I'm moving a lot of the simulator runtimes. In order to see the actual savings, I went back to the settings app. I tried to relaunch this and go back and forth to it. So it calculates this again because it needs to pick up on the very large changes we made. Initially I had system data of 130 gigabyte and now you see it's down to 83, which is 50 gigabyte less. This is a lot of the simulator runtimes. And then here the developer is now 30 and it was before 60 gigabytes. So this is the biggest savings. I have now minus 10 gigabyte for video recordings. I freed up 80 gigabyte. I already did some cleanup before, which was another 100 gigabyte. So you see, <laughs> I have now reclaimed a lot of my space uh, and mostly I'm using here the, my disk for documents, which is supposed to be like this. When you do this cleanup, especially for some of these developer files, 
you should be aware of that only delete it really if it's necessary because xcode will be slower initially when you relaunch this because it needs to regenerate some of these files but you see there's a lot more files involved in the whole system which are necessary to speed up your development process so it's not all bad that it, they generate so much space you can find a link to this utility app in the description box. It's not perfect yet, but it gives you a good flow of what files to look into. For example, that you don't delete folders that you that are don't really big anyway. As you see here, I know that I don't need to de delete derived data because it's only three gigabytes right now, which will help in the future because then you don't need to wait for Xcode to rebuild all of these structures again. So go ahead and have a look in the description box. If you want to know how I actually built this utility app, you can watch the next tutorial where I talk about how to use command line tools to build utility apps for macOS. Until next time, happy coding.